he's a provider. He can take care of me. Um, also put in that assertiveness. That's what I like about the masculine energy. I don't think that's the and what, what's attractive about a man in touch with his femininity? I feel like they're less likely to see things like um, me being a breadwinner more as a threat, and they're more likely to see it as like a positive thing and celebrate my success. I think it, yeah. since it's like so looked down upon, it's like cool. Okay, I'll say this. A young woman... Oh, hold on. If your woman makes more money than you, I would never see that as a threat. But here's the problem. We're, we're, and this is why men don't like the woman be making the most money. It's because when women when women are the breadwinner, they tend to get... They don't know how to handle being the breadwinner winner from what I can see. Some women can, but what ends up happening is they lose respect for their man. They think because they're earning more money... If a man was to say, hey, babe, I need an extra $500 because you make more than me, then she starts thinking she takes care of the house and that you're less masculine or you're less of a man because you don't make as much money as she does. And when something goes wrong, women will turn that on you. They'll be like, they'll be like, oh, well, I make all the money anyway. What kind of money are you making? Huh? What are you doing? I'm just going to take all the money. You, you live off more money. I mean, I make all the money anyway. They flip it on you as if you're less than. And that's what ends up happening when a woman is the breadwinner. And so it's hard to celebrate your success because celebrating your success, in the way she even said it, is celebrate my success. It's not your success. It's our success. What are you talking about? If we're married, what do you mean your success? Your success is my success. But you see how she said, oh, I need him to celebrate my success. It's like, oh, I thought we were together. All right, let's look at a couple more to see guys who are in touch with such like feminine parts about themselves why is that um i don't know because you just don't see it as an everyday thing so once you see it it's just like okay you know he's not he's not scared to go out of the, his comfort zone for something that's not normalized in this social society i would rather my that's not, there's no, that was not a good example just saying being in touch with their feminine side what do you mean by that and what makes it feminine that's my only argument with some people when women say, I want guys to be in touch with the feminine side, what makes it feminine? Well, like, what makes, what are you talking about? Like, having emotion is not a feminine thing. That is a human thing. You know what I mean? Being in touch with your emotion is not a feminine thing. It is a human thing. It's just women are more vocal about their emotions than men are. Because men can't be emotional in every situation. They just can't. You can't protect your family and be that man of protection if you're always emotional. Men can should be able to handle their excuse me. Men should be able to handle their emotions, and then go talk to their. They should have a friend or somebody they can talk to when they need to have this emotional outpour, but it shouldn't be to the point where they need to have it with everywhere and everybody. They don't need to get on and uh, rant and talk about how hard life is. Nobody wants to hear all that. man be a little bit more feminine or sensitive in that, in that tone. You know what I'm saying? I really don't like to use feminine and masculine because I just feel like people should just be who they are. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying. If you're soft, if you're gentle, if you're loving, then it is what it is. And if you go by rough love or tough love or anything, I mean, I'm pretty sure somebody's out there with tough skin for you. At what point does masculine... See, she had common sense. She had common sense. You hear that? Common sense. It's not really a feminine or a masculine thing to be sensitive. I don't think, because everybody's raised differently. And if, if you grew up in an abusive household, abusive household, then you probably are going to be more sensitive. You're going to have more trauma or you might be more aggressive. That has nothing to do with you being a man or a woman. It's the fact you grew up in an abusive household. You know what I mean? And everybody takes abuse differently. And so and if you grew up in a very loving home, you may be more loving than some other men who didn't grow up in a loving home. It's not really a masculine and feminine thing. What it really comes down to is just how were you raised? You know, my parents weren't very um, affectionate, so I struggled to give affection. It's not easy for me. Um, I do try, but my mind is normally focused on are the bills paid? Um, do we have enough money to do this? Um, do we have enough stuff in the house? Are we going to survive the next month? What happens if one of us loses our job? What if that kind of stuff? I'm I'm more about that than hey baby, you want to cuddle? Hey baby, you want to 
Do you want to spend some time together? Hey, babe, do you want to watch a movie? I just don't think that way. I'm always trying to be somewhat productive, not to say I always am. Sometimes I can be lazy, and I just, I, I rarely ever just sit around, if, you know, but at the same, because my anxiety is so bad. I have love days. I wish I could just sit around and do nothing, but my anxiety is too bad for me to do it. I feel like I have to be doing something for the world. Um, but hopefully one day I don't have to do that. But my point is, it doesn't make me less, it doesn't make me more masculine because I show less affection. It just means I'm a less affectionate person. And that's something I really need to work on. But it's hard for me because sometimes in my head, I feel like it's a waste of time because my father was not an affection man. But my parents have been married for over 30 something years and they make it work. You know what I mean? And it's, you know what sucks is when a marriage fails, let's say my parents got divorced and they were married for 40 years. Just because they got divorced doesn't mean every year for that 40 years was a waste of time. It doesn't mean like, oh, you should have never got married in the first place. If you've never been married, you need. there's nothing wrong with it if a marriage fails. It happens. But the experience you get from being married is still something that you should behold. It's still an experience you had. You lasted 30 years with one person. That's something to say than you were with 30 people in one year. You know what I mean? It's different. They become toxic masculinity. If they're too demanding, arrogant, overwhelming, yeah. egotistical. I feel like when they're have, taking... Being egotistical is not a masculine thing. Women are egotistical too. Listen how they said that. Egotistical. Over the relationship and it's like unbalanced energy. Energy, yeah, for works. sure. When it becomes unbalanced and they use that masculine energy as power mm -hmm. over you and they become controlling. I feel like it's when they let that masculinity become their only personality trait and they almost feel disgusted with doing anything that may be considered more feminine. If men hit. I don't think, I don't know how masculinity um, is, a, is that personality trait. But I can't agree with what the other women said. Um, when you do use your masculinity, and when I say masculinity, for me, like I said, I don't know if you can really boil it down, but let's say for the sake of this argument, we'll say masculinity is being confident, protective, dominant, powerful. Let's say that is the stuff. Then, yes, in that case, toxic would be coming, using your power. Like if you are with a woman and you know you can overpower her, so you use that to abuse her, obviously that's an issue. Or if you use your logic and sense to manipulate, that's a problem too. Like if you know you can outsmart your woman, I'm not saying all men can outsmart women. I'm just talking about in particular the case. Yes, that would be toxic. That's a toxic relationship. You should never use your gifts or the talents or anything that you have that is a strength of yours to bring somebody else down. I would completely agree with that. You can't use it to dominate and control. Um, but I don't. I don't know how you can say using your masculinity trait and then um, where you're disgusted by anything feminine. I just don't know what feminine means in this case. Because I feel like when women say feminine, they mean emotional and sensitive. Or they just mean not manly, I guess. You know what I mean? At the space to really be themselves and not be pressured into thinking that they're gay or soft or you know whatever it may be you know gay. i feel like if we didn't have that type of like thought about men being like gay or anything then men would be more softer they would be more in tune with their feelings and they would be just i don't know just better people do you think i do think that that becomes an argument because when men do become more feminine and when I say more feminine, I just mean when what see when I was when I got called feminine in high school and college, it was because I respected women. If I said I didn't look at a girl's booty, I would get called gay. That's what I was that's what I was told being feminine was. Hold on. I gotta start keeping this keyboard over here.
Yeah, I feel like. Yeah, and I also feel like men do get called gay when they tend to act a little bit more, not as manly. And I do think that gets more overused. But I think if somebody's calling you gay because you're not masculine to the degree that they think, meaning like, for like personally, like for me, because I've always been like, y'all notice how I can talk. I have the gift. I can speak well. But back in high school, this kind of talking was not looked upon as nicely as it was. Back then, I was told I could be a speaker, but when I used to talk about deeper things, like I don't think we should look at women's butts, uh, I don't think we should treat women like objects, even though I was a porn addict at the time, I was still trying to find my way. And I was like, you know what, I don't think we should look at women like this. I think we should treat them better. Um, I got called gay. This is before simping was now the new thing, but I got called gay all the time. And it was just like, I just... I'm not gay. It's just, it, what does that matter? The point is, I'm just trying to say that women deserve respect. I don't know if we should be over here talking about how good their breasts look. Toxic masculinity is more likely to come from an alpha or beta male. Alpha. alpha. I think it can come from both, honestly. Maybe probably a beta. Maybe an alpha. I, I don't know exactly. I don't know. What is the difference between alpha and beta males? I think alpha is someone who would kind of be considered a leader. Uh, and I think... A lot of the time that carries like a bad rep, but I don't personally think that it is, so. <laughs> Can toxic masculinity exist without toxic femininity? No, they go hand in hand. So then why don't we just call it toxic behavior? That's what I'm Ooh, saying. Oh, that's a good one. It's definitely, to it's just toxic behavior. That's exactly it. That's what I was saying. Like, being masculine, being feminine isn't a thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's just certain characteristics that we place on it. But toxic masculinity and toxic femininity is just being toxic. If we use the word toxic, and that's just the nuance. What we used to just call it is bad behavior. Now we call it toxic. But yeah, it's just it's just bad. And I agree with that. I just feel like we should get to this place of just treating people like human beings. We, we get so caught up in being a woman and being a man. And obviously we see that in other ways. Now it's so important to be called a woman, so important to be called a man that we kind of missing the point of what makes a man a man and a woman a woman. We we really confined it into this box. A woman dresses this way. She talks about this kind of stuff. She she likes this kind of stuff. A man dresses this way. He looks at this kind of stuff. He talks about this kind of stuff. And that's where we're getting caught up. It's just like when they say if a young boy likes to play with Barbie dolls, he's gay or he's he wants to be a girl. It's like I grew up playing with Barbie dolls. You know why? Because they were toys. That's the why the F I play with Barbie dolls. Because they were toys. I played with Barbie dolls. I played with DBZ. I played with Power Rangers. I played with trucks. I played with anything that was a toy because I was a kid. I didn't see Barbie dolls. I saw characters. Just like I see on TV. When I went to watch TV, I saw women and I saw men. And so when I played with Barbie dolls, I saw women and I saw men. That's all I saw. I didn't think, oh, this is a Barbie girl. I want to play with her because I feel more emotionally. No, I played with them because they were toys. <laughs> toys are toys. I didn't watch TV where it was solely men. I didn't watch a TV show where it was solely women. I didn't, you know what I mean? And so I think it gets too caught up in what makes a man a man and a woman a woman. And if you, if you like the color pink, oh, you must be gay. It's just like, if you would have knew me growing up, you would have thought I was gay. And the, the point is, it's like, it, what does it matter, dude? If I like the color pink, which I, I don't like the color pink, but... But if I did like playing with Barbie dolls and I did hang out with mainly women, but I also liked them, you know what I mean? But it didn't mean anything. I just could get along with women better than I could men. I had a bunch of guy friends who I would consider I love them. But I also got along with women better because that's just how I am. I just really, really talk to women really well. You know what I mean? And I, I enjoy talking to them. Obviously, there's some things I can't say because it's inappropriate. There's stuff that I think that I would say normally. Like, if I knew a girl well enough, I would talk to her more openly. But I got to be careful. I can't just talk to any woman like I would every woman because some of the things I would say would sound inappropriate to them because I would talk to them like I do my guy friends. And you can't always do that. And so, yeah, but I've always been very close to women and I've always talked to them like normal. I never saw like this and that. But, you know, some people thought I was gay because of how many women I talked to and how I talked to women. And it's just like, it's not about that, dude. I just... That's just how who I am, man. I just how I was. So, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna get some sleep. 
But thank you for recommending this video. You too. I'm out. Peace. And for you kick people.